Hi, welcome to your growth group. Um, this Sunday we talked about choices and uh, the choices of people of faith. And uh, we started off with three thoughts. Number one, uh, we, we shared that uh, our life is determined by our choices. Choosing to do good, choosing to do bad, or choosing to follow God. It all affects our lives. Second of, second of, uh, second of all, we said our choices reveal our character. And Eleanor Roosevelt said, one's philosophy is not best expressed in words. It is expressed in the choices one makes. Our, our choices really do, does reveal the, uh, the, our character, reveals our philosophy of life. And then we shared how our choices will determine our eternal destiny. So our choices are important. We took some time and looked at the life of Benaiah from 2 Samuel chapter 23. And I'm gonna have you guys do that in your growth group, look a little bit at his life. And uh, he is such an impressive man. We, we dealt with three things uh, from his life. We dealt with this thought that uh, people of faith choose to take risks. Uh, for Benaiah, it was risky to jump into a pit with a lion on a snowy day. For us, it's risky to follow Jesus Christ. For us, it's risky to pay our tithes. It's a lot of money over a period of 50 years. It's a lot of money we invest in the work of God. But the reward we get for giving to God outweighs the risk. It's, it's a risk to witness. But the reward that comes from witnessing is greater than the risk. We talk about things that hinder us from making right choices. Things like fear. Fear can hold us back from making right choices. Uh, not only fear can hold us back, but sometimes uh, laziness holds us back. That we're just we don't we don't want to uh, to do anything. Maybe we, we want to just take it easy, follow the easy path. I, I use that phrase in the sermon. But sometimes we're like water. Water always takes the path of least resistance. And sometimes we like to take the path of least resistance. But if we do that, we will never accomplish anything extraordinary in life, for ourselves, for our family, or for God. Another thing we mentioned that can hinder our choices is this. We don't want to make waves. We don't want to cause a fight. But we need to realize that in this world, we are in a fight. We are fighting against the enemy of our soul, the devil. Second of all, we talked about this thought that people of faith choose to look foolish. And we looked at some of the Old Testament characters that looked foolish, like Noah when he built the ark, or Sarah when she was buying maternity clothes, or Joshua marching around the, the uh, walls of Jericho, or Benaiah jumping into a pit with a lion, or Jesus in the New Testament looked foolish in the cross. But the Bible says this, for the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Sometimes living the Christian life, we look different, we look foolish. When people want to go out and go to the bars and, and, and smoke drugs uh, or, or do uh, tell filthy jokes, we look like we're unusual. We actually look godly when we do that. Thirdly, we talked about this thought that people of faith choose who they stand with and who they stand for. Now, this was a little bit more complicated. Um, the, the story is sent around 1 Kings chapter 1, where David is, is old, he's dying, and Adonijah is fighting for the throne. And everybody seems to be turning towards Adonijah, except for David's four close friends, uh, Bathsheba, Nathan the prophet, Zadok the priest, and Benaiah, his bodyguard. When everybody else, including including Joab, the leader of the military, because once you had the military with you, uh, it's it's a powerful thing, and it looked like Adonijah had everything going for him, and he was going to be crowned king. Yet David's four close friends chose that they were going to stand with David, even though David was imperfect. They chose that they were going to stand with David, and David's plan was for Solomon to become king. 
So they stood with David. We choose to stand with imperfect people. But we also stand for a perfect God. They chose to stand with David, but they were standing for God because it was God's will that Solomon become, became, was to become king. So they stood with the will of God. Uh, they stood with David, but they stood for the will of God. They stood for God. In this life, we have to choose who we will stand with. Will we stand with imperfect people? Yes, we have to. Because our family's imperfect. Our friends are imperfect. Our church is imperfect. But we choose to stand for a perfect God. I hope you enjoyed your study questions tonight and enjoyed your time in your growth group. God bless you.